So you're ready to buy a practice and you see these appraisals roll by your desk and sometimes you wonder, well, what do all those numbers really mean? And how much money am I actually going to make? Hey guys, Cole Brinney here, founder of PracticingDentist.com and as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go through a series about dental practice acquisition startup, uh, building your own practice, and financially what that looks like and what it costs, what it's going to take for new dentists. So three things I want you guys to think about. If you ever look at an appraisal, you're going to see the production numbers, the collection numbers for that practice. And if you're an associate, you're already used to paying taxes at your certain income level. Well, there's three things to think about, three things you should look into when evaluating practices, and that should be your take-home income because you need to survive and you need to know what your family needs. So number one is figure out what you need per year. Figure out what you guys spend, if you can cut anywhere, if you can save anywhere, um, but how much you need to survive as a family, what your income needs to be. And then take your income, take the practice income, the net income to that doctor on the appraisal and go to smartasset.com. And I've got a couple of pictures at the end that show um, what my calculations were. But say you make $200,000 of income, what are your state, federal, FICA, um, all of your taxes, subtract that, and then go in. You should know your dental school, dental school debt number already, but calculate that. What's your monthly payment? Subtract that. And then at the end, the very last is go through and take that practice appraisal purchase price and put it into a 10 year, uh, 5%, 6% um, calculator and figure out what your monthly payment is gonna be for your dental uh, acquisition, your practice purchase debt. Um, those th three things are really important. At the end, you're gonna get your income number. Make sure that's, that's a good number. Sometimes the cheapest practice isn't always the best. Um, even though your debt is lower, your income potential isn't high enough to make the income you need to, s to sustain your family. So sometimes um, looking at practice appraisals, there's a sweet spot where you want a really profitable practice that you can scale, that you can increase the profit. Um, you can increase the, the net or the collections to you and, and buffer that number so that your income take home at the end of the day is enough to sustain your family. So number one, taxes. Two, student debt. Number three, your practice note payment. So that's the first step. Calculate that. As appraisals roll by, calculate your number. Know what your number is that you need for your family, um, your income that you're shooting for as a practice owner. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for joining me here. This is the add-on to the video that you just watched. I just wanted to walk you guys through the blog um, numbers to show you the exact calculations that I used and a calculator you can also use to help you um, with financial decisions as a dentist. So um, this is on my practicingdentist.com blog. So go down, I just, um, I just posted this about a week ago. Think like a dental CEO one calculation you must make. So if you scroll down, you go through, and I'll just walk you through step by step um, what these look like. Um, so number one, I started with an income of $200,000. So assuming I, I saw an appraisal come back and the dentist made about 200, and that's what I'm projecting um, to make with this practice purchase. And say it's collecting 400,000, which is relatively low and has 50% overhead fixed costs at 190000 So at 50% overhead, that means I'm making 50% of the total collections in that practice. So I plugged that into my calculator. I had $200,000. And, and this may not be exact, and as a practice, you're going to have some write-offs, but this is just for an example. So you plug that into your formula, income taxes. In Minnesota, where I'm from, um, total taxes I'm paying on $200,000 is, is almost $60,000 because you have to remember when you're calculating taxes that you're paying state and you're pay, paying this FICA tax. So as your own boss, as an employer, as a practice owner, all of a sudden you're going to be seeing FICA come across. You probably didn't even notice that. On, maybe you did on your uh, pay stub as an associate. But my income now drops to 140. dollars That's my take home. So subtract my student debt. Say I come out and I have $250,000 of student debt, that's $1,700 a month. And if I plug that into my formula, that's gonna subtract, let's see, what is that? Um, $20,900 a year. And then I'm gonna go down and then I'll figure out my practice purchase. So say this practice is $350,000. I use this calculator on Smart Asset at a 5% interest rate and I'm going to get 
$3,700 a month for my practice purchase payment. So after all of those payments, my income is reduced to $75,000 take home. So that's why I say it's really important. You got to know what you need uh, to survive on as a family. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over um, projections for practice purchase and patient retention and why it's so important and why um, looking at your revenue numbers and your overhead numbers are really important to knowing profitability and your take-home income as a new dentist. All right, guys, thanks a lot.